Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new league racing video. This is round number two of PSGL and we are racing on one of my favorite tracks in Formula 1. It is Circuit of the Americas in Texas and as you can see Q1 is wet. And in the past I've had many, many good races here in the wet as I just love it in the wet around here. Um, Usually pace is really good in both quali and in a race in wet conditions around here. Even like on older F1 games. Um, but of course this is a brand new F1 game and I've not even done any wet yet on the F1 or the F1 23 game so far. On uh, in, on wet conditions. So this is uh, going to be pretty much the first time. And it's going to be challenging for sure. Of course I've done some my team on wet conditions but you can't really compare that of course um, you get a slight feel for it but that's about it as the AI is not really up to pace and we are about to finish our first lap here almost heading into the final sector now of our first taste on wet conditions in F123 and this far it's been a bit slippery we're one tend up on our teammate Marcel Kiefer who same as us has done no wet practice yet so um, this is also one of the sole reasons we do league racing, so we can practice this kind of stuff as obviously the conditions are going to change throughout uh, the qualifying session and that is good practice, so that's why we're doing this. Into the second last corner, bit of hesitation as I'm trying to find the apex in these wet conditions and we're about to come across the line, it's going to be a 140. Five. I'm going to five, one, four, seven. Now I've fooled up for multiple laps because in wet conditions I always want to do more laps in a row to get a feel for it, you know. Even though it might be slightly slower, uh, I feel like it's always better to, uh, in the session, do multiple laps and get a good feel for it, get into a rhythm, you know. Um, and yeah, especially when I've not done any wet so far on the uh, F123 game, uh, I felt like I needed that even more. Now into the second sector we go, almost one tenth up, as we're trying to get a power down through this left hand, two tenths up actually, on this exit, so it seems like a good improvement so far on our banker lap. Um, a lot of people went out way earlier than me, I felt like that would be unnecessary as I got a big snap on the exit there, trying to get the power down, and there's one and a half ten gone, so that's not ideal. We were doing pretty well, and we were over three tenths up, but we've lost half of that. And, yeah, a lot of people went out really, really early in the session. Um, but, yeah, if you want to be fighting for pole position in wet conditions, then uh, you can only use one set of new tires per qualifying session. And that's, of course, what we're aiming for. Maybe not the smartest plan, because we have done such little wet driving. Um, as I messed up that left hand there. No, I my heart is... Uh, as... Um, yeah, I, I keep having issues with my hut where it blocks the apex, even though I've corrected it multiple times. Maybe it got reset in an update. Um, but yeah, I had this on Bahrain as well. I put it correct, and now it's back to blocking some apexes again. So it's a bit frustrating, but yeah, it's probably something I need to uh, put in my pre-race checks. So uh, this won't happen again. Uh, so there was an update earlier off on this league racing day so i'm not sure why but uh it is blocking the apex a little bit again now our final lap on in this qualifying session as uh yeah we do need to improve quite a bit we're p19 only i just couldn't get the power down in turn one you see we have no mechanical grip whatsoever um and yeah there's so much time in this lap still it's only a 45 4 we've done whereas the fastest in the session is a 44 6. now um, Parfumé rules are off these days in PSGL because they want to mimic F1 Esports as much as possible. So there might be people on the wet setups who have done wet practice. Or maybe it's something else we're doing wrong. Maybe it's something in the driving. But um, I've been playing F1 games long enough to know when I'm driving on the limit. Got no grip. See, this is a joke. I've got absolutely what? no grip on that exit there. Now we lost a one and a half tent to our banker lap in that corner. Like now we lost an ice all the time. Another two tenths, so we lost like four tenths in one corner basically, and 
I have no idea why. It just seems like you can see, even see there. I'm taking it easy, and the fronts were just sliding around. Same in this right hander. Um, but it's just something I have to figure out uh, after this race um, because again, you can see the front is just not turning. Our teammate Danny Bresne has gone over a second faster than us, and we've been teammates for years, and we have never been further apart than three tenths uh, in any condition so yeah uh, we'll figure out uh, after this race what went wrong but you can see we've got no grip I don't think and I've ever had this little grip in my life it's only uh, p19 in the end so um, we're going for a little uh, last row to first challenge here it's not the first time we uh, we've gone pretty much out in q1 in code I think so last time uh, we did a PSGL race around Kota. I think I started P15, actually. And we ended up winning the race. So, Kota is a great track uh, for this kind of scenarios. Because it's so good to ra race wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. It's a little bit worse on F123 because of the marbles. As the marbles are placed by what the AI uh, drive is racing line. So, that makes the racing well, quite a bit go. worse. But I reckon we can still make some good positions. Now, Formation Lab disabled. So, we're going to go straight into the race. It's gonna be five red lights, and away we go. It's Otis Lawrence on the softs ahead of us, and Matthijs van Erwen on the softs as well behind us. Off the line we go into turn one. A lot of people opting for the inside. We're gonna go around the outside in case there's any carnage. And heading out of turn one, we're trying to avoid some uh, inside traffic, and the guys ahead of me collide. So I had to go over the grass. Cost me a bit of time, but at least we managed to stay out of the trouble. And we have gained four positions, actually. Um, Simply avoiding crashes, more or less. I don't think we've overtaken anyone on track, apart from Nicolas behind us. But he had the same issue as us, having to uh, avoid any crashes. That's Freddy Rasmussen is ahead of us. Into the hairpin we go. Having a little look down the inside. Oh, wait, why are they making it three wide? Whoa. They are making it three wide into the hairpin. I had to squeeze off Nicolas a little bit there, because I was still next to Freddy. Um... But yeah, that was not an ideal scenario. We managed to keep our nose clean at least. And we're picking up a nice slipstream of Dylan Warren here. We're going to go all the way around the outside of him. Break very deep. And obviously we're not going to get that position because I braked way too late. But the aim there was to get ahead of Freddy into that left hander. Bit of a wiggle on the exit. And now I have to go defensive from Freddy. And Matthijs behind me. Freddy sends it. But we give him room. And because of the momentum we managed to get back ahead again. So, uh, good position gains here on the opening lap. Five positions gained, which is just what we needed. And I think the only person who got a better start than us was Otis, who is up to P9, I think so. Of course, he was on the softs. And if you go, if you go back to lap one, you can see he avoided all that carnage in turn two perfectly. Uh, he had no issues. He didn't have to break, didn't have to go over the grass. He just went super clean oh man everything. what a dog fight and took advantage of everyone scrambling around while he just blasted past on those softs now um p14 we are ahead of freddy still who has a penalty i think for illegal overtakes um and yeah we're just gonna try and stay ahead now matthijs is on the softs behind him which i did not even notice at the time i thought matthijs was on the hearts and you can see that he sends it from very far back and I was like that must have been Freddy and I was a bit surprised that was Matthijs but at this point I still did not see that Matthijs was on the soft tires because if I would have seen that I would have not been fighting here um, so yeah I'm going defensive here uh, from Matthijs who gets hit by Freddy and uh, Matthijs uh, is around uh, well, nothing to do with that. so yeah both Freddy and Matthijs uh, losing positions there because of that incident, as Tomek is sliding around quite a lot, trying to keep track position to Dylan Warren. But um, now we've got Jake Benham behind us on the mediums. And once again, I did not even see that he was on mediums. Um, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because the top left hut, I've shrinked it I again. I Warren, same ERS as you in front. Oh, why? Work together, Jake. Oh, he's on medium. Um, so yeah, as you can hear me see, I only noticed when Jake was going for the move that he was on medium. So I decided 
to let him go ahead. I would have um, never it if I knew that earlier. And, um, yeah, that cost us a bit of time. That was no ideal. Because uh, I should have seen that earlier. And maybe it's because my hut in the top left is now smaller. But, yeah, I shouldn't really be excused. I just should be seeing that kind of stuff. Should be seeing that kind of info. Um, but, yeah, I don't know why I didn't see it. Um, of course, no formation lap makes it harder to notice these kind of things because you're straight going into the race and you don't really have time to focus on what other people are doing you're just focusing on what you're doing yourself now that is uh, Jake boxing at the end of lap 10 for a new set of hearts I assume and now ah uh, no it's a uh, glitch Tomac has lost the arrest to Dylan Warren ahead so we are gonna have to work together a little bit here to get back to that group ahead and yeah, we're almost 100% uh, ERS, the battery system, and on the long back straight, uh, the longest straight on this track, we will pass Tomek and use our ERS with the help of DRS to get past him, but then also gain time to Dylan Warren ahead and kind of slingshot ourselves towards that DRS, because for the people who don't know, DRS is such a powerful tool in F1 Esports, you really need it in order to have a good race and get forward in the traffic. So right now, Dylan Warren is 2.3 seconds ahead of us, which means we need to gain 1.4 seconds to get into the DRS, which is the rear wing opening, which then decreases air resistance uh, through the rear wing. And yeah, it just gives you so much more top speed. And because you have more top speed, your battery recharges faster as well as you get from point A to point B faster but then there's more friction through the rear brakes as the braking zone is longer uh, because you arrived at the corner with more speed and because there are more there is more friction through the rear brakes um, the battery recharges faster because the battery recharges through uh, the, ki the kinetic force of the brakes I sorry I can't uh, speak kinetic force the right way I saw some people make fun of me or for a seven one last lap. saying kinetic force the way I do, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying, I'm trying. So uh, yeah, we're using our battery now, which is the yellow bar you can see in the bottom middle of the screen, uh, which gives you more engine power, and that way um, you obviously gain to the car ahead, but when it's empty you obviously don't have that power anymore and we are using that advantage right now to close in to Dylan Warren so he once again can get a DRS and then recharge your battery again faster and yeah basically just get more pace out of the uh, lap itself as um, the top three I think so or top four are all medium yeah, tires so some more ERS than you yeah, yeah I have to drain it anyway and yeah because the top three are running on medium jumps. tires uh, they're dragging along the hard runners and that causes that the hard runners are gonna have a better race pace overall as even though the hard medium strategy might be slower if you get pulled along by faster tire runners with the help of DRS then uh, that might be a huge advantage later on in the race of course so we are trying to get back into the DRS of the front runners as uh, I think somewhere in the middle the Alfa Romeo of Brendan Lee has lost touch to the top three but he might be closing in later again because he is on the hearts as there's another person that started on the medium I think so is boxing for a new set of hearts and they will be going to the end of the race for sure now um, Shanika Clay uh, is going from medium to hearts now we're almost back into the DRS uh, exactly in time because you can see our battery in the bottom middle is almost empty and uh, we're just draining the last final bits out of it. But Dylan Warren will get a tiny bit of dirty air probably through this fast section. Which then gives us a tiny bit of an advantage. Uh, about a tenth probably. So we can uh, just get back into that DRS detection zone. DRS detection is coming up right about this white line. And now we can finally start recharging our battery again for later on in this race as we are gonna need it. Now, Freddy right behind us, he has eight second penalties. Tomek behind him has three second penalties. So both his box and mediums can drop off a lot yet. Yeah. And they are obviously, I reckon, not gonna go for a move on me. 
uh, simply because they had to use their battery as well to keep up with me uh, um, in order to get back into this DRS. And they're also thinking a long game, you know. If you are uh, that far behind, you've got to think long, you've got to think about the end game, you've got to think about gaining positions, and sometimes you need to be patient. And with the experience of Freddy and Tomek, they'll be thinking the same. Dylan goes into the box at the end of lap 14 for a new set of mediums. And now we've got the same scenario again, where we need to get back into the DRS of Danny Bresne, our teammate, in front. And he is obviously driving in a house, but uh, he is our actual real-life teammate. And then Marshall Kiefer, ahead of him, is also our real-life teammate and our in-game teammate. So... Um, both of them are part of the Mercedes F1 Esports team. So is uh, Jake, um, of uh, part of the Mercedes F1 Esports team. So we're back into the DRS of Dani Perezne ahead of us, who passed our teammate uh, Marcel Kiefer. And now Freddy Dani boxing. is boxing, Freddy is boxing, and I think Tomax boxed so as well in that lap. is net P6, P7, I think. The Seepers still have to box. Uh, nope. Now, um, we extended our stint even two laps longer compared to our teammate Marcel Kiefer. So we're going to be coming out really far behind. We're going to come out, well, we're almost a, uh, a pit stop uh, distance behind the, the leaders, actually. Because Patrick Seepers was only eight tenths behind us when we went into the box. And you might be thinking... You're no way. There's no way you're making this back up. But you have to it. understand that um, they had the advantage of the new tires 10 laps ago already. So they gained all that time to us uh, while we were in all tires. And now it is our time to have those fresh tires. Coming out here, we are 5 seconds behind our teammate Marcel Kiefer. So he gained 2.5 seconds per lap on the undercut. And we are almost 10 seconds behind Dylan Warren. So we've got a job to do here, and Dylan Warren is not even in the lead group, so we are pretty much 20 seconds behind the leader, with 10 laps to go. Now, Kota is known for high tire wear, so um, fresh tires are going to make a big difference, and that is our advantage here, and all we have to do now is just keep focused, keep pushing every single lap. It might feel very disheartening when you come out almost 20 seconds behind the leader but you just got to stick to the plan and keep pushing and as you can see now uh, we move on to three laps later we're gonna get DRS from Philip yeah, Prationator and um, yeah we're gonna have to get past him fast he's an old heart and you can see the grip advantage is absolutely crazy now Philip won't fight this Philip um, is smart enough that there is no point to fight this. If he fights it, he will lose anyway. He will just lose himself more time. And he will lose us time. So there's really no point. We're on tires that are over 2 seconds per lap faster. So we will get past no matter what. Again, 2 laps later, we are uh, right behind Marcel again. So in 6 laps, we've caught up 5 seconds. And uh, Marcel got a big undercut, of course. And now we have the fresher tire. So we're going to get past him here on the long back straight. And... Uh, once again, this shouldn't be too hard with the help of DRS. Marcel won't get DRS because he's more than one second away from Jake Benham, our other teammate. And uh, again, easy pass with the help of DRS into uh, the final sector of the lap we go. And next up is Jake on those old hearts. He boxed at the end of lap 10. And he's on basically 14 lap old hearts at this point. Whereas we were on 6 lap old hearts. Now... We're going to get DRS once again on Jake. We are not close enough to go for a move, even though Jake does not have any DRS at all. Um, but yeah, we will be able to get past him pretty easily. The tire advantage is so incredibly big that uh, Jake won't put up a fight. Uh, again, because it will hurt his own race. Uh, drivers need to be smart in this situation. And of course, Jake is a teammate as well, so he's not going to make it too hard. Down the inside we go. I go a bit white because of the marbles on the inside and um, that cost us both a little bit of time so that was a bit unfortunate and a little bit of a mistake from my part but um, now we're gonna have to get on with it we are only p10 with three laps to go 
and we have to catch up to Barry now, who has three second time penalty. So Forward flashing in front. Not yeah. sure if there's a chance that will get removed. It's around lap 13, 14. But um, again, we have got so much of a tire advantage. This shouldn't be too hard. We're gonna turn on the overtake button. We have not really used it that much over the past few laps to get past people because we always had DRS while the people we were passing had no DRS, which makes it much easier. But Barry did have DRS, so we had to use our battery a little bit to get past there. And now there's one and a half laps remaining. Actually, under one and a half laps remaining. Basically, one lap and one sector to go. And we're still only in P9. But the people are ahead, are struggling. And remember, nine laps ago, Patrick Sipos was a pit stop distance ahead of us. A pit stop distance. We boxed when he was eight tenths behind us. So we have caught them back up because Patrick is right there in P3. And there's one lap to go. Yeah, and as crazy more, more. as it yeah. sounds, we are still in for a podium position here because they're fighting up front, as you can hear me say. And this is exactly what we need. This is exactly Mark, man, what we joke. want. This is what we deserve. Right. Now, AI line. now we need them to keep fighting. We need them to go side by side. You can see no one is going side by side for the Aces because that's pretty much impossible. But we've got such a big tire advantage and you can see how much we're gaining through the Aces. We're going for a move on Dylan Warren down the inside. However, the next one turns into a left-hander. I decide to go for switchback. Dylan hits Danny Bresne and we have to cut the track a little bit there as Dylan squeezes us a little bit. We have to go for the outside. Dylan goes for the outside. We go for a switch back here. And now we should get slipstream as we are right behind Dylan and Danny Bresne. You can see the advantage we get as well. from the slipstream. And we're gonna go for a double move into the next left hander. Up to P7 we go. You can see Patrick Sipos with a three second time penalty 10 laps ago. He was a pit stop distance ahead. And now we're in the fight to finish ahead of him. We're in a fight for a podium position here. Everyone is going side by side. Everyone is on the attack. We go for a fake move in Alfie Butcher. Now we go for the switchback. And you can see we've got so much more grip and traction. We decide to go around the outside of Alfie Butcher and Brendan Lee. Double overtake around the outside. And now it turns into the inside for the fast left hander. Brendan turns Brendan in. Just turns for the apex. And now we are up to P5. Up to P5. However, with the penalty of Patrick, we're gonna finish P4. It just turns in like I'm not there. And what a last lap it was. Now, we finished P4 um, on track, of course. However, Otis got another penalty for crossing a wide line on pit entry. And we actually finished P3 on the podium from P19 on the grid after being in <laughs> on the grass in uh, the opening lap in turn two, having to avoid crashes, losing time to a podium. Um, which is crazy. Uh, I, I can't believe how chaotic that race was. It was such a good race. So much different strategies. I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Make sure to like and subscribe for more F123 content. And see you guys next Yo, time.